In order for us to see, we need to have light. But what is light? How does it travel? What properties does light have? Understanding light will help us understand the world around us, especially the atomic and molecular world, and so the goal of this video is to help us start by answering some of these questions. So, what is light? Light is a wave that travels at a constant speed of 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, the speed of light, or c. Light is composed of oscillating electric and magnetic fields that are perpendicular to one another, but we are going to largely ignore the magnetic field since it's not that important to us in chemistry. So let's talk about the electric field. If we look at the waveform of light over here, there's a lot that we can learn about its properties. From here to here is one waveform. A waveform is just a graphical representation of a wavelength. So if this is zero, then this is one lambda. Lambda is the Greek letter we use to represent wavelength. In chemistry, you'll usually see this in units of nanometers. One nanometer is equal to one times 10 to the minus nine meters. Remember that light always travels at the same speed, the speed of light denoted by C, and that C is equal to 2.998 times 10 to the eight meters per second. Another property of light is something that we call frequency, the rate at which oscillations in the electric field occur. We can measure the frequency by counting the number of waves that pass through a location per second for a traveling wave. We use the Greek letter nu to represent frequency. The units of frequency that we use are hertz, which is the same as the unit reciprocal second. Notice that five waves have passed by this location in two seconds, which makes the frequency five over two seconds, or 2.5 reciprocal seconds, which is equal to 2.5 hertz. Mathematically, wavelength and speed are related. If we multiply the wavelength in meters times the frequency in reciprocal seconds, we get units of speed, which are meters per second. Since all light, regardless of its frequency, travels at the same speed, this speed is c. Which of the following graphs represents light at the highest frequency? Assume that all of these waves have the same speed c. Since all of the graphs have equal time frames, the correct answer is the graph that has the most wavelengths over that period of time, which makes this the correct graph. Notice that this graph has larger amplitude waves, but the amplitude of a light wave is not related to the wavelength or frequency, it is related to the intensity of the light. Since chemists don't spend that much time thinking about light intensity, it's the wavelength and frequency that are important, we'll just ignore the amplitude of these waves. Let's use our relationship between frequency and wavelength to do some calculations. What is the wavelength of light with a frequency of 2.0 times 10 to the 15 hertz? Use nanometers for your final units. Recall that the formula for frequency is c over lambda. We can rearrange this equation to make it easier to solve for the variable we are looking for, lambda. Now let's plug in our givens and solve for lambda. Remember that one hertz is equal to one reciprocal second so the seconds will cancel out, so we will be left with units of meters. We want our final answer to be in units of nanometers, so we need to convert the answer we got into nanometers. We can do this by setting up a dimensional analysis problem. One meter is equivalent to 10 to the ninth nanometer. Our units of meter will cancel out and we'll be left with our final answer. Now calculate the frequency in hertz of light with a wavelength of 324 nanometers. Here, we're doing the same thing we did for the last problem, except now we're given wavelength and we're asked to find the frequency in terms of hertz. Using our formula nu is equal to c over lambda, we can plug in our givens and solve for nu. Because the speed of light, c, is given in meters per second, we need to express the given wavelength in meters too. 324 nanometers is 3.24 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. We end up with an answer of 9.26 times 10 to the 14 reciprocal seconds. Recall that one reciprocal second is equal to one hertz. Let's say we have light with a frequency of 1.4 times 10 to the 15 hertz and light with a frequency of 3.2 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Which light will reach the earth faster from the sun? Remember that the speed of light is a constant, so light is always traveling at the same speed, 2.998 times 10 to the eight meters per second. Therefore, both light waves reach the earth from the sun at the same time. In truth, light refers to all electromagnetic waves, all of which travel at the constant speed of 2.9979 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Visible light, for example, is light with frequencies between 4.3 times 10 to the 14 hertz and 7.5 times 10 to the 14 hertz. 
Ultraviolet light, which humans cannot see with their eyes, has higher frequencies than visible light, and smaller wavelengths, but otherwise behave identically. All of these waves travel at the same exact speed. The only special thing about visible light is that human eyes can perceive it. Bees, for example, can see ultraviolet light. Light can be broken up and categorized into what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. Let's look at infrared light and gamma rays to make some comparisons so we can learn more about the spectrum. What is the difference between the wavelengths of infrared and gamma rays? What is the difference between the frequencies of infrared and gamma rays? By looking at the electromagnetic spectrum, we can see that gamma rays have a shorter wavelength than infrared light. This also means that gamma rays have a higher frequency than infrared light. This makes sense because we know that wavelength and frequency are inversely related. What is the difference between the speed of infrared light and the speed of gamma rays? Remember that all light travels at the same speed, the speed of light, c. What is the difference between the masses of infrared and gamma rays? Light is massless, which makes this the correct answer. Light is synonymous with electromagnetic radiation. The only difference between all of the differently and arbitrarily named categories in the electromagnetic spectrum is the frequency and wavelength of the waves. So while we humans see a narrow range of these frequencies, there is no fundamental difference between the light we see and the majority of light which we don't.